Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Advanced React WordPress Theme Development. In the previous video, we learned about how to create the search page and we also learned about how to display this loader and the 51 results found, how to display error. So we learned all of that. And in this video, we will continue further and we're going to add this search form in the navbar as well. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to close all of this and go to components and we'll go to header. So under layout, we have header index.js. Uh, I'm just going to add some prop types over here. So I've just pasted that. You can get the code from next year's headless WordPress uh, GitHub repository. And uh, you can go on to Imran H. Sayyad slash next year's headless WordPress. And then under, you can go to feature YouTube tutorial. Okay. And under that, you can go to front end and then source and components. You will get all of that code. Okay. So I'm just going to import prop types under the header prop types from Lodash. So all we're doing is not from Lodash, sorry, prop types from prop types. Okay. Uh, so all we're doing over here, we're just creating some prop types, header, header menus, okay, which is the object type. And then we're also going to pull the slug. So slug, and we're going to pass the slug to our nav. The reason we are passing the slug, which is uh, empty as default, is so that when you go to our search page, I don't want to show this uh, form, which appears in the navigation bar, as well as on the page. I want to show it twice. That's why I'm passing the slug. So onto the search page, um, if you go to pages, search.js, if you remember, we are passing slug from the props. Okay. So, so it will be the value. So the information that it's a search page will be available inside of the slug. All right. So let's go to the nav. So in the nav, I'm going to have slug. And again, I'm going to use some prop types. Again, I will not spend time in typing those prop types because that's pretty simple. So I'll need to pull the prop types on top. So import prop types Oops. from prop types. So I pull that and it's the same thing. Header, header menus, slug, just setting some defaults and defining the prop types. Okay. So <clears throat> what we're going to do over here is that we want to Put our search form here okay so for that what we're going to do is we'll first go ahead and wrap this inside of inside of a div we'll handle the contact form later and that'll be the future video so pretty excited about that one uh, over here we are just going to say add some classes large flex so anything after large screen should be flex and then items center and then actually that should go to this one class name okay and um, I'm going to add some classes here and then finally all I'm going to do is just check if slug equals or not equals oops search if it's not search page then show me the nav search so I'm gonna create okay I need to create a component first and we need to create a component called nav search okay so go to components search and we'll call it as nav search const nav search equals nav search equals return empty string for now export default nav search okay uh, so if the page is not search then I want to show the nav search component which will contain our form otherwise just return null and I'm just going to Pull the nav search component on top. So I'll say nav search 
from search nav. Okay, so that's that. And inside of this nav search, um, I'm going to say div with a class of MT4, MD, MT0. Okay, so I added some styles there. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to reuse the same form that I created here. Right? So I'm going to say search form, search form component. Now this component is expecting a few things. So let's see what is it expecting. It's expecting these three things. So I'm going to pass that. <clears throat> Search query, set search query. But this time, uh, it's not going to be, you know, using our search page for this functionality. What we really want to do is that if the user types that information on top, I want to, I want to redirect the user to the search page. So we'll say const array search query comma set search query equals use state and that's going to be empty initially and i'm going to pull the use state from react and then <clears throat> search query will be equal to search query and set search query is going to be equal to set search query okay and then for the handle form submit Let's say const handle form submit. We want to redirect the user to the search page. Okay. So for that, I'm going to pull the router from Next.js. Okay. And then I'm going to say first event dot prevent default. Why? Because uh, this is a form and I don't want its default behavior, right? Okay, so that's why event.prevent default. And then next thing we'll say router.push. Um, this is going to be search. That's a search URL will be search. Sl uh, and then question mark. In the query params, I'm going to pass whatever the user has typed here. So template string search query. And this is going to and then return null we don't need to do anything after that right okay so let's go and check refresh go back to home page voila congratulations you've got your search component here uh, i'm just going to say hello and hit enter and you'll see the magic there you go congratulations it's going to the search page with the query string s equals hello now you say to me imran why am I even passing s equals hello? What's the point, right? I know that I expect this page to automatically show the results of hello. So how do I do that? All right, well, that's not so difficult uh, to achieve. So what we're going to do is we'll go back to our search form. So we'll go back to our search page. So job of this one is done, by the way. So I'll just close that. And I'm going to head over to my pages search because that's what I need to now extract this from the top and then make a query, right? So what we'll do is we can use the use effect. So we'll go over here, we'll say use effect from, and it will import it from React. And inside of this, We'll say, okay, first thing we need to do is we need to store that value. Uh, we need to get that value, which is the um, search query string. So I'm going to go over here and say const search query string equals if it's process.browser. Because remember that router is going to be available only client side, not server side. And this component is rendered server side first, and then it goes to the client side. So you're not going to get the router. You're not going to get the router client side. That's why I'm checking the process.browser. 
So if process.browser, okay, uh, then router.query.s, if that is available, go ahead and make that value equal to that. Otherwise, let's keep it empty. And I'm just going to pass that here as like an initial state. Then going down at the bottom under use effect, I'm going to check if at all the value of this search query string which we just stored is changed or not. Okay, if it is changed, only then go ahead and call this use effect, otherwise don't call it. Okay, so I'm going to say set search query and I'm going to set, set this value. So I'm going to set this value of search query to this one to whatever is being you know passed under the query string and then I'm going to call the fetch post so I'll, I'll do the same thing again say fetch post but before that I will also check if at all if it's available if it's available only then go ahead and make a call right so now you see congratulations can you see magically it just worked so if I go back again and notice that I'm going to type hi over here and hit enter. The moment you do that, it's redirected me. And inside of the query params, I have s equals hi. And that's what's been added here. Why? Is because I'm saying that, first of all, get that information from the query params using router.query.s, not router.query.s, and go ahead and set that value set search query which means set that search query value to this new one which is high and also fetch post which means call this uh, query which is going to go and grab all of the results with this value search query right which is this one and then i'm also seeing that inside of the input field because i've done the set search query here all right and then if you want to do another query you can do that Superb, excellent. I don't, unfortunately, I don't have anything for superb. Let's see, do we have anything for excellent? No, we don't. All right, so congratulations. We just built an excellent uh, search functionality and notice that I don't have this search box here on top because it doesn't make sense. On search page, I already have a box. Why do I have two boxes? And the reason for this is because we are checking the slug of the page if the page slug is this one, they don't show that box. Otherwise, if I go to any other page, like sample page, or if I go to blog page, go anywhere, I have this available and I can just search it. It'll redirect me to the search page with all of the content being showing over here. Awesome, brilliant. So I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. And uh, do start my repository like all the beautiful 145 people have. Uh, do follow me on GitHub. My GitHub handle is Imran H. Sayed. And follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is Cody Tank. I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.